Number 28. Write the molecular, total ionic, and net ionic equations for the following reactions. And then we have letter A. So we have calcium hydroxide CaOH2 aqueous plus acetic acid, which is HC2H3O2 aqueous, and we have to give the products. And then not only that, we have to get the total ionic and the net ionic equations. Fun. <laughs> oh boy. All right. So let's do this. So just know that we always have to find a molecular equation to get the total ionic. And then from there, we could get the net ionic. So as of right now, we're going to be figuring out the molecular equation. So I'll just write that on this side. Okay, so the molecular equation is the balanced equation with all the compounds intact. So in this case, we have CaOH2, and that's aqueous, right, being added to HC2H3O2, and that's aqueous. And now we just have to find the two compounds. All right, well... It looks as if this is a special reaction, right? CaOH2, that should be like sending signs off in your head, right? Calcium hydroxide, that is a strong base, right? So if this is a base, and I know it's a base because I see that I have a metal with hydroxide, right? That means that this has to be a acid, and it looks like an acid because there's a hydrogen in the front of a compound. Generally speaking, 99% of the time, if you see that you have an H in front, it's going to be an acid. Okay, we've done tons of acid-base problems in this chapter or in this playlist, right? So you could go, you know, back and check, run through the playlist if you need more practice. But this is just a fancy double displacement reaction. We have to find the ions of each in order to find out our products. So let's give it a go. We have CaOH2. Let's find out what those ions were. Remember, you just need to know where the break was uh, when the ions came and formed the compound. Now, OH is a polyatomic, that's hydroxide, and polyatomics love to stay together. So my break has to be in between calcium and hydroxide. Use those subscripts to figure out what the charges were. There was one calcium for every two hydroxides. So this one crisscrosses up telling me that hydroxide was a negative one charge. And this two crisscrossed up telling me that calcium was a plus two. So in order to make this compound, there was a calcium that was a two plus coming together with an OH minus one. Okay. Let's do the same thing for acetic acid. HC2H3O2, right? And where was the break? Well, recognize that acetic acid is a polyatomic. H3CO2 is acetate. I didn't mean if I said acetic acid was a polyatomic. This C2H3O2 is the polyatomic. This is called acetate. That stays together. So the break has to be between the hydrogen and the polyatomic. Use those subscripts, right? There was one hydrogen, and how many of the total polyatomic? There was one, right? This should have been in parentheses with the one. Use those to crisscross back up. This one told us that the acetate was a negative one. This one crisscrosses up telling me that H was a plus one. So we got H plus one and C2H3O2 minus being a negative one. That's basically the hardest part. If you have your charges correctly, you can pretty much rest assured that the rest, fingers crossed, uh, is correct. But if you don't have the correct charges, everything is gonna like snowball. Okay, now let's make the products, right? And remember, when we make the products for a double displacement or an acid base, right? In this example, it's outers with outers, inners with inners. So if I think of this in terms of like a box, the outer guys of a box will make the new compound and the inners of the box will make the new compound or the other compound. 
So CA2 plus will want to be hooking up with the acetate. So these go together, right? And then the inners go together. So OH minus one goes together with H plus. They will make a new compound on the product side. Doesn't matter which one you state first. Let's just work with the calcium one first. So in this case, I have a CA2 plus coming together with C2 H3O2 minus one. Now we have the charges to crisscross down to get the compound. This two crisscrosses down, telling me that I need two acetates. This one crisscrosses down, telling me that I needed one calcium. I have two of a polyatomic, so I need parentheses when I write this, right? So it would be CA parentheses C2H3O2. Two. That's the first product. And now we just got to finish it out. What's going to happen when OH minus comes with H plus? Now remember, the pluses come first. So don't write OH minus first, write H plus first when you form a compound. So H plus one, OH minus. This one tells me that I have one OH. This tells me that I have one H. So HOH but that always gets reworded into H2O. Now, we're almost done with the molecular equation. We have to include states. Well, water is an easy one, right? Anytime that you see water, especially with your net ionic equation questions, it's going to be a liquid. Now, what's the deal with this guy? What's the deal with uh, calcium acetate? Now, this comes from your solubility rules. So I'm just going to put the info that you need to know up top here, right? If you look on your solubility chart, you'll see that your acetate, they do have information on acetate, which is this guy, right? And they, they will say that acetate is soluble and there should be no exceptions. So it kind of makes it easy. If something is soluble, no exceptions, it's always going to be aqueous. That means that it will dissolve into its ions, into the charges that formed it. So I know that this guy is going to be AQ. The last thing that we have to make sure is that we have to balance the equation. So just do a quick look and let's just see if it's balanced, right? I'm going to spot out my polyatomics here. Let's see, I have two, oops, maybe I should make that a different color. I have two acetates, right, on my product side, but I only have one acetate on my reactant side. So chances are I'm gonna wanna put a, a number here, right? What number times one will get me to two? Oh, definitely a two, right? Now, let's see what else. Uh, I got one calcium. On my left side, I got one calcium on my right side, so that's chilling. Let's count up um, maybe the total hydrogens. Now, when I say total hydrogens, I don't mean these because I already grouped these hydrogens when I did the acetates right now. So I'm going to group all the other hydrogens. So I see that I have two hydrogens here and two hydrogens here. So that's a total of four on my left side, on my reactant side but I only have two hydrogens on my products. So I'm gonna just have to change that quick. What number in front of here will get me to four? Totally two, right? And now everything should be balanced. I have two oxygens remaining and two oxygens remaining. So now my molecular equation is finally all done. We can check this off. Now just comes monotonous, tedious work. However, it is not hard. We did the hard part. Now, when you're moving on, the only thing that you really should keep are your four ions. So we could call it a cheat sheet, you know, per se. But basically what you're doing is just make sure that you have these written down, the four ions that made all of these compounds, right? And just have them somewhere. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just 
quickly erase all this work and pause the video if you need to, if you wanted to write that down. But the only part now that we really need are these four ions. It doesn't matter what, um, you know, how they're written. Like, it doesn't matter that calcium was first or hydroxide. For this case, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to keep them over here. Actually, hmm. Maybe we'll put them down here. This will be like our little cheat cheat box. I think I, I think I might have room. Okay. The next thing is that we go into our total ionic equation. Okay. Now this is basically when we look at the states of each compound and we make a decision whether they're going to dissolve or break down in solution or remain the same. The key rule here, and maybe I'll put it up here. Actually, I'm going to put it over here. The key rule is that solids, so if you see an S, an L for liquid, and a gas, they will not dissolve. So you will not break them down. However, if you see an aqueous, that will dissolve. And what do they dissolve into or what do they break down into? Oh, our cheat sheet down here. You're always going to break them down into their ions. So let's see. I have this one is aqueous. So I know that this compound is going to break down into its two ions. Now, before we move on to the next one, I want to give you some background information, right? So the reasoning, there's two reasons, right? The reasoning why we broke this one down is yeah, it was aqueous, right? But we know that calcium hydroxide is a strong base. It's one of your six strong bases that you should memorize. Strong bases and strong acids, basically they dissociate very, very close to 100%, which means that they will be in their ionic form nearly 100% of the time. Weak acids and weak bases they do not dissociate 100%, meaning that, you know, the possibility of them breaking down into their ions is not as great as if it was a strong acid or base. You would have more of this molecular compound than the ions. So there's a little catch here, right? Generally speaking, all aqueous should dissolve except weak acids and weak bases. Just be on the lookout for those. I said, well, we said, right, that it was an acid before, but was it on your list of six strong acids that you guys have to memorize? No. This one would be classified as a weak acid, and therefore, it only gets one arrow. So that's the trick. Even though it says that it's aqueous, it doesn't get broken down because it's a weak acid and it's not one of your six strongs. Now let's move on to here, right? Calcium uh, acetate, aqueous. I just have to make sure that it's not an acid or a base. It's not, it's a salt, right? It's just an ionic compound. It's got a metal in front and then it just is acetate. So this will break down into its two components. We go back to our aqueous equals breaking it down. And then we have liquid water, and liquids never dissolve, so that we will only keep it as one. Now, we just go to our cheat sheet to write down what those ions were. So for calcium hydroxide, what were the ions? Oh, well, it was calcium 2 plus with an OH minus. So I'm just going to write that. Now I'm just looking at my cheat sheet, and it just makes life so much easier, right? Calcium, Ca2+, plus, hydroxide, OH-1. Now we just have to be, you know, a little bit, it's like a tedious process because for each one, we have to say the state. So I had aqueous here and aqueous here. And now you just have to say how many you had of each, quantity-wise. I had one calcium, so I don't have to put a number here. However, I had two hydroxides. The quantity in your molecular equation turns always into a 
coefficient in your ionic. So you will not write OH2 because that's not the ion, it's just OH. But I will say that I have two OHs. So that's the difference going from a molecular to a ionic. Now I just move on, right? In this case, I don't break up acetic acid because it's a weak acid. So I'm just going to say two, I just keep that, right? Two HC2OH3, what? H3O2. And I'll just keep the state yields or produces. I'm breaking this down. Go to our cheat sheet to just look at what those ions were. Calcium was a two plus. Acetate was this guy. So I'm just going to literally just rewrite that, right? So CA, two plus again. I just have to say aqueous all the time. C2H3O2 minus one aqueous. And now let's just make sure that we have the same amount. I have one calcium, so I don't have to put any number in front, but I had two acetates, right? So quantity turns into a uh, coefficient in your ionic. So I'm going to say I have two of these. And now we just keep moving forward, right? I have plus two H2Os, liquids. I don't break that down, so I'm just going to write two H2O liquid. That's your total ionic. Look how easy that was once we had our cheat sheet going on here. Now for the finale, right? We have to go from a total ionic equation, or sometimes they just call it an ionic equation, to a net ionic. The net ionic is basically once you get rid of your spectator ions, the ions that don't do anything, they're spectators, they watch what's going on, um, the end result is always your net ionic. So you're going to basically cancel out spectators. And they're going to be ions, the charged ones, right? And spectator ions are the ions that are the same on both sides. So let's just go from left to right. Ca2+. Oh, well, I have a calcium 2 plus on this side. It's literally the same exact thing. So I can... Cancel it out. Now, just make sure, guys, the canceling is not in the total ionic. So technically, if you needed to write your total ionic, you know, keep these. But now I'm just redoing it just to get the net ionic. So my spectator ions are the ones that I canceled out. Ca2 plus was a spectator. And now let's just keep going. Let's see. Okay, I have two OH minus on the left. But do I have any OH minus on the right? No. So that can't get canceled. Uh, I have HC2H3O2, but I just have the ion here. So that can't get canceled out. They're not the same. Nothing else is basically the same. So you only had one spectator here, just the calcium. Then you literally rewrite everything just as it is. Now, does it really matter, you know, who starts and who finishes on one side or the other side? It doesn't matter right? I think generally, though, they, they leave the negatives for last. It doesn't really matter. Maybe I'll just switch it up just to show you guys. So it would be 2 HC2 H3O2, right? If you wanted to put the acetic acid first, plus 2 OH minus, and that's aqueous, minus 1, yields, I won't write the calcium, and maybe I'll just put Maybe I'll swap this one out. It really doesn't matter. Just as long as you have both of them on one side. And that's it. So this would be your full net ionic equation. So just keep in mind, guys, that weak acids and weak bases do not dissociate. That's the only trick. Okay? But other than that, I really hope this helped, guys. Please let me know in the comments what you thought. And these are checked, so let's just check these. We, we did all three of these. Um, hit the subscribe button if, if you want to. That would help the channel out. That would help us out. And, that, and, you know, thank you so much for that. It just gets the word out there that this service exists. So it really helps. Um, I, I hope you guys are studying hard. Let's, let's do the next problem, all right? I'll see you in the next question. Bye-bye.